Why, hi there, I'm Ron Chuck, and welcome to another video from Retro Sports Network. Today, we take a look at Roster Card Baseball, uh, a game I picked up and can play cards and dice on the computer uh, and have things like ball stat, keep score, and ball roller roll the die, and virtually it's the footprint is very small. It's two pieces of paper. A couple page rule booklet a couple pages of charts most of the results come right off the card or the thing so instead of having individual cards for everybody you just kind of put something so you could read the line and and read it across like a, t a table it is a good game i would say it's probably the equivalent of like strat basic or app of basic there's a little more bells and whistles than strat basic everyone is rated for range and wild uh, pitchers can throw wild pitches catchers can have pass balls uh depending on how strong the catcher's arm is it does make an effect for stolen base percentage chances and all that but overall it is a good game and it is a quick playing game one season costs you five bucks thanks to my patreon members the entire package costs 99 dollars Plus, you get a lifetime subscription. What does that do? Gives you, for that kind of money, if you like the game. Oh, yeah, it's not on that screen yet. Uh, if you like the game, uh, it gets you 118, 119 seasons for 99 bucks. You're paying. If you buy the whole package, it's less than a dollar a season. For If you get 10 seasons for 30 bucks, if you don't want to go that far, uh, I believe the base is five dollars a season. So really, it depends on how much money you want to spend if you like the game. Every season, one is available. So if you wanted to play the entire American League, you could. Actually, I think 1900 is the first season. Um, playing time for me is about 20 minutes a game, and that's great. So you can sit down and do a series. And as you know, I have some pretty serious physical limitations. I just can't put down cards and roll dice and have and with a cat in space and stay cool here in the office room uh so most of like all of my cards and dice gaming needs to be at least some sort of computer helper and this one actually does come with an excel helper but if if you want but nope i don't use that so let's take a look at the card and why i like the game so much all right Uncle Ron did this take on this earlier and did a sample inning and forgot to actually show what the hell I was doing. So this is the second take. So there are two teams that come if you ask for a sample, the 2015 Baltimore Orioles and the 2015 Boston Red Sox. And wouldn't you rather see the Red Sox anyway? I know I would. I know, I know, I know. Now, there are very good videos online. Stratomag Delaware has taken the time to break things down into great detail from, I believe, a year ago. Go back and find those. He t takes a great deal of time of going through how to steal bases, how to go through the charts. The charts are not that overwhelming, by the way, but really breaks it down so you can understand it. ID Jeff on his channel recently went through how to use the helper. He's played some sample games of roster card baseball. Again, you should be following those channels anyway. Just great, great stuff to watch and to make the game easy to play it is a quick game so let's you see where the arrow is let's take a look at david ortiz's line he is a left-handed batter as you know and that matters on some dice rolls there is a left right split uh that either turns into ounce or hits depending on that so like I said, it's a little more involved than APA Basic or Strat Basic, but it plays just about that fast. All right, first column you see for Ortiz is the S. That's his run rating. If you played APA at all, you know all about F runners and S runners. Uh, any Greg Sovan game, which is a roster card is, along with Fall Classic Baseball, Ball Hollow, which I featured a bit on the channel, and uh, Play Ball. Uses the same thing. S is slow. A is average. F is fast. And F exclamation point is super fast. Such as Bookie Betts. Uh, so Ortiz was not fleet of foot. Especially at 39 years old. 
Then the next number you see, the first number you see there is a 12 for Ortiz under extra base hit. So if I roll between a 1 or a 12, you need 2, by the way, you need 2, D, 10, and 1, D, 6 to play the game. That's it. There's a little bit of math involved, and we'll get into that. So Ortiz, if he rolls between a 1 or a 12, he hits an extra base hit. And so it's pretty easy with Ortiz. You see the green column there for Homer, then the next column for double, and then the third column for triple. And so in Ortiz's case, a basic roll of 1 to 50 is gone. Now you can adjust that with the pitcher. So let's just say Craig Clay Buckholz down here is pitching. And his green column is minus 10, okay? So you would drop that to 40. And if you wanted to play Fenway Park up in the upper right-hand corner with home run ratings, since Ortiz is a lefty, you would drop that to 2. So that home run, that would be a 50 in the neutral park, turns into a 38 at Fenway off of Buckholz. Now, if he was to face like a Craig Breslow with a plus 20 home run rating, you would take that to 70, subtract it to 68. So that really is the only math you kind of have to involve yourself in with the game is that, okay? All right, so the next column, we'll go up here now for these, is the singles column. He rolls a 13 to a 16. Big Poppy's got a single. Then walk, 17 through, 20, 17 through 24 is a walk, okay? He did not get hit by a pitch, so he cannot get hit by a pitch. Let's say Hanley Ramirez didn't draw a walk. Well, didn't draw, walk a lot. He had a 17 hit by pitch. So if you roll a 17 on the 2D10, he's plunked. Ortiz is not. Then the strikeout rating. So in Ortiz's case, if you roll a 25 through a 35, he strikes out. Now, and then you have the basic outs between 36 and 56. And let's take a look at the charts. Don't worry about, for the moment, the table. Just look at that 0 through 9. A 0 is a pop-out, and then you use your your D6 to figure out where that pop-out was to. 1 is a line-out, and again, sometimes with runners on base, you can get a double play. 2 is a pop-out, again, to different positions, catch your first, second, third, short. And then 3 through 6 are ground-outs. I'm looking at the blue 2 here, okay? So a three would be a ground out to first, a four would be a ground out to second, so on and so on. And seven, eight, and nine are the flyouts to res the respective positions. If you have a runner on, usually a one in that, that one D6 is a double play. Sometimes it's a fielder's choice. Sometimes it gets sloppy and everybody advances. Okay, so that's the basic chart. So... We're with RTs. Now, if you choose to play, it's in the rules written this way. 57, 58, and 59 are your split. If, let's say, Ortiz was facing Rick Porcello, that would be considered a single because Ortiz is a lefty and Porcello is a righty. If Ortiz was facing Wade Miley, it would be considered an out. It would be because of lefty versus lefty. I find the offense runs a bit hot in this game, so I ignore the split. It really doesn't make that much difference to me. I'm looking just to play the game and, and not do that. But if you want to, or it's certainly in the rule, suggested in the rules that you do, you have that little bit there. So it just leads to additional stuff. All right. Everyone is rated to bunt. That's what that first blue column is. Sacrifice hit. So if Ortiz decided that he wanted to bunt, if he rolled a one or a two, the bunt would be potentially successful. If not, bad things happen. You can hit and run in this game. You can steal. Let's move up to Mookie Betts. You see in the SBA column, Betts is a 27 and a 3. So if you wanted to steal with Mookie Betts, he, told, he stole 27 bases or tried to steal 27 bases in a given year. Okay, That 3, you take that 1d6 and roll. So if he rolls... 
a 1, 2, or 3 gets a jump. In this case, he got a 2. So he goes. His base still rating is 78. I see a 61 there. He steals the base. Congratulations. He stole the base. Um, and that's how stealing works in the game. You can there, you can have injuries. I'm not quite sure how they work. I usually play as played. And so I ignore the injuries. And you have some basic stats. So you know how many at bats and homers and batting average, just in case you want to bench some, play someone off the bench. You know, like uh, uh, Pablo Sandoval strikeout 18,000 times. Actually, that's not a good example. Mike Napoli, who's got a terrible strikeout rating, 20 to 41, plus whatever it's with the pitcher, striking out too much, can't get on. I'm going to pinch it. I know who was my pinch hitters and what their batting average is. Yes, I know that. On base percentage is a better indicator, but the batting average, and if you can read the cards, since everything's right there, you know how people are going to do. Let's go to the fielding. That's where the. So, on any 90 roll, 90 to 99 roll, you refer to either the fielding of the player or the pitcher, or if a runner is on base on a 90 or 91. It's a wild pitch. So let's start with Clay Buckholtz. He's rolled a 91. All right. The D6 roll is a 2. So if there's a runner on base, he's throwing a wild pitch. Find that, that chance for that usually every other game. And I think that's fine. I think the wild pitches just come out. It's a very good system. You can get a pass ball on a catcher. Poor Blake Swihart. You see the six there? You see the A. We'll get to that in a second. A. Uh, exclamation point six. Okay, so if you get a roll of 92, that's a pass ball of the runner on. Swihart's going to give it up. But they're rated for that. And all fielders are rated for their arm. That's what, let's take a look at Napoli there at first base, the top row. You see the S, the asterisk, and the 1. Okay, so his arm is good. S means strong, A means average, W means weak. That will matter sometimes on double play chances or throw, trying to get runners out at home or on the bases. So that, that arm matters. The asterisk for Napoli is his range. If you... When you roll a 90s, if you see that you can see there, the error check is 1 to 4, the range check is 5 to 6. So on that blue die, I mean on the white die, I get a 2. So I'm going to roll for an error check. Let's say it's a ground ball to um, Brock Holt, if you can play anything. So let's say Brock Holt's at second base. So. I get the, you know, let's say it's I've rolled a 94 and a 2, so I'm not going to roll again. And my white die is a 5, so it's an out. If I had rolled a 1, he would make an error. If he was at 3rd, and you see the W, the exclamation point, and the 2, if I rolled a 1, it's a 1 base error. If I rolled a 2, it's a 2 base error. Odds and even, so it's possible if Holtz is short with his four rating, he's got two chances, if you get that, to, th to throw one in the dugout for a two-base error. That makes a difference. Okay, let's go back to Napoli's example here. So the S, the A, and the W are contingent on what's going on in the field. Strong, average, and weak. The asterisk is a range play. On, if the asterisk means it's an asterisk, a comma, and an exclamation point. Asterisk is the best rating. Range checks come on a 5 or 6 roll in the 90s. It's kind of like a, an X play in Strat, for instance. Yeah, on an asterisk, it doesn't matter what, you don't need to re-roll that because you re-roll to see what the the play is on the table, but he can't give up a base hit at first on that play, on the, on the asterisk. On the comma, who's got a comma? Um... Wow, there's not a starter with a freaking comma. It's feast or famine. Uh, Alan Craig. If you look at in the outfield, he's A comma zero. 
So on a range play, that comma would mean that if Craig was in the outfield, he can't commit an error. But if you got, got him on the range play, a comma would be he would give up a base hit on a six. Now on the exclamation point, which you see a lot with the weaker fielders, then he gives up the hit on a five or six on that second roll. So it it kind of gives it a three-dimensional thing, and you never know what's going to happen. Okay, let's take a look at a pitcher. Let's look at old Clay Buckholtz here, the righty. And again, that matters on those 57, 58, and 59 rolls. Pitchers are given the ability to stop hits on a roll between 60 and 69, uh, prevent walks on a 70 through 79, and strikeouts on an 80 through 89. So the more hits you give up, the higher that number is, the better you control, the lower your walk number, and the more you strike out, the higher the K number. Buckholtz kind of is an enigma, which he always was in his career. So in the hit column, he would give up a hit on a 60 through 68. On a 69, it's a fly out to right field, okay? Let's say Stephen Wright below the knuckleballer, his thing is 60 to 62. And then he would refer to the chart to see what the outs are from 63 to 69. So it gives Buckholtz some granularity. He's going to give up 6% more potential hits than Wright just because he gives up a hit on a 60 to a 68. Now walks. That tells you how good the control is. Buckholtz did not throw a lot of walks. He threw a lot of strikes. That's why he gave up a lot of hits. So he would walk somebody on a 70, 71, or 72 roll. But on a 73 through 79, you refer to the, to the out chart. And that gives you whatever Clay had. That's an out. Strikeout. He has an 87. That means on a dice roll of 80 through 87... That's a strikeout. 88 and 89, that's a fly out to center, especially with a runner on. So Buckholz will get his fair share of strikeouts because he seven, has a 7% chance of getting one on a roll. Give up a ton of hits, but doesn't throw a lot of walks. We talked about his home run rating earlier. All pitchers have a wild pitch rating. Again, if you roll a 90 or 91 with a runner on base, you see the blue four there by Buckholz. So I would roll, it's a the white die, the D6 is a 3. So that would technically be a wild pitch for Buckholz. If it's higher than the 4, like a 5 or a 6, then you just re-roll for the play. Endurance, everyone is rated to pitch to a certain amount of batters. You just I just use a general um, rule of thumb that I consider pitchers tired when they throw... To 27 batters, or or can't pull a pitcher until they throw to 27 batters, give up 10 base runners, or 10 base runners, or five earned runs. Okay, and then I would pull. Um, that should get you for a good pitcher into the seventh. If not, pitchers can get lit up, and sometimes the dice go really hot in this game. He's rated everyone to go bullpen. So if you needed to, like someone to come out of the bullpen in a playoff game. There really is no fatigue, per se. I suppose you could. I, I could actually look to see in the charts what it is. But, you know, let's say that Buckholz has hit his fatigue. You could just add a couple to the hit rating and the walk rating and take a couple from the strikeout rating. Every game has it. But generally, um, you're going to find that it works out about right. If you just get general rule of thumb, modern seasons is 10 base runners. Anything probably from before the strike of 94 is going to be 10 hits. But it depends. If someone's getting racked, they're going to give up the five runs. You're going to want to yank him anyway. You see where the pitchers have the stats, so you know what roles they were used in. If someone was used out of the pen and started, such as Stephen Wright, uh, if you're a big Henry Owens fan, going to throw a lot of walks. It depends on what you want to do. And the ERA and the pitchers have fielding too. I use those if you, get, if you don't get the wild pitch. You look to the fielding rating. Okay, and pitchers can bat. We're not worried about that. All right, so let's play a sample inning, shall we? We're going to pitch Clay Buckholz. Actually, no, I'm going to pitch, um, who's my best pitcher? Clay Buckholz. That's pretty scary, and that's why the Red Sox missed the playoffs. And we're going to bat Napoli, Pedroia, and Sandoval. We're just going to go up and down the list here, okay? So it's pretty easy. It's 2d6, different color, same color. 
I use different color and or 2d10 rather and 1d6. So ready? All right. So Napoli's at the plate. Buckholtz on the mound for this intramural game. Dice roll is 22. So I look at Napoli and that HBP is 19. That strike count is 41. Napoli whips one out. Pedroia is up. The pitch is a 58. Now, Buckle, uh, Pedroia and Buckles are both right-handers. So you treat that as an out. I would treat it as an out anyway. But in the official rules, it's treated as a, as a combo play. If it's the opposite side, it's a hit. If it's the same side, it's an out. Fly ball to center. You see that blue eight there? Means it's if it's an out, it's a fly out to center field. Two out. Pablo Sandoval. Hominem, hominem, hominem. Let's roll. Two outs. Buckholz rolls a 46. Okay. Sandoval's strikeout rating stops at 26. His out rating ends at 56, as with everybody. 46. Okay. I'm looking at that blue six in the 2D10. Ground ball to short. Since there's nobody on, I ignore the five. And the side is retired. Clay Buckholz gets him one, two, three. But wait, we're going to bat David Ortiz just once against Clay Buckholz. Okay? So one more dice roll. Ortiz rolls a 99, which is a range play. So I'm going to look at my right fielder. And this case is going to be, we're going to use poor Rusny Castillo. And so if you take a look, it's an error play. So we're only focused on that 99. If you can find, there's Castillo's line. You look all the way S asterisk 2. So I'm going to re-roll the die. If I roll a 1, it's a 1 base error for Big Poppy. If I roll a 2, it's a 2 base error. 3 to 6 is a catch. I roll the die. It's a 1. Castillo dropped it. They sent him down to Pawtucket. We're still paying for that contract. Anyway. Um, Ortiz reaches on a one base error. Rinse and repeat. Not every player is carded, but although on the Red Sox, uh, they have someone with nine at bats here. I counted it earlier three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. There's spots for 21 batters to be carded. When we come down to here. And for the pitchers, 3, 6, 9, 12. And so there's room for 15 pitchers. And so for everyone over 40 innings, got carded, including Koji Urihara, as the closer. Um, so you can do an as played. Use your best judgment if someone isn't carded. So you get 30, let me see, 21. And so yeah, so every team comes with up to 36 players. On the one sheet. There is no second page for a sheet. Uh, you have to make some sacrifices. So yes. If you're doing an ass plate. Sometimes you just got to look. Use your best judgment. For pitchers. I would just go with 65, 75. And 81 or 2 for strikeouts. Uh, but for batters. You should have most of the batters. That made anything. And for the price you're paying for this. You're going to get 98% of the players. Anyway. So what do I think of the game? I really do enjoy it. I've played about 50 games so far. Uh, I have it down to about 20, 25 minutes, depending on the situation, which is about the equivalent of app. A little bit slower than app, a basic. But I am keep tinkering with um, how I had the game set up for me. Um, you know, in a, in a pitcher's duel, probably 17, 18 minutes if there's lots of base runners closer to 25 uh, because of ball score and because i have exact lineups for an ungodly amount of seasons setup is lightning fast i can get the game up and running in three okay that's pretty good from getting my exact lineup posted on the day that's opening up the program making sure i have the charts where i need them it's two to three minutes tops, which is one of the thing, reasons why I struggle with cards and dice games is trying to get everything ready and making sure that I can actually see it. 
but it's two minutes, two to three minutes tops for getting set. A game, 20 to 25. So if you wanted to do a three-game series, if you wanted to do a one-team replay or a multiple-team replay, uh, you're done in an hour. And you can print out scores, whatever you choose to use. It just goes that fast. And because uh, the dice rolls are pretty much the same, you know where the hit rolls are, you know where the pitching roll rolls are, it, like APA Basic, you memorize things pretty quick. You know that a 45, for instance, is going to be a ground ball to third all the time, unless someone has a, like Chris Davis, who has a 50 strikeout rating in 2015. And so you know, and with that third dice there, it's pretty much okay. So if I have to worry about runner advancement, I just look quickly at the charts or just kind of fudge it along the way, depending on what you want to do. Uh, so yeah. So you get a full-fledged baseball game. Is it going to be completely statistically accurate? You know, there's going to be variances along the way. I, as I said earlier, I think that maybe it's because of the way that my dice are set up. For me, they run a bit hot. Offense runs a little bit hot. But that's okay. Um, the key thing is, with anything, you have fun. And for the price you pay for the season, goodness, $5, that doesn't even get you a pizza. I mean, I spent $2 on a Coke that, that you can't see here off camera. Or if you went and bought a beer at a bar, you know, that that's 5 bucks unless you get the Coors Light, and that's just pee. So, with with that in water. So, you know, for the price of a beer, you can get a season. And if you like it, you can re pretty much replay whatever your heart desires. If you want to see a game played in Patreon, you certainly can. That's patreon.com slash network. The same deal. Uh for that but really it's for me it's a good way to play cards and dice i've created some of my own house rules especially with the charts and the three-sided die so i'm not trying to stop all the time and make that but if you play with the proper rules it's still a fast playing game there's some checks there's very little math usually just the home run checks that's the, that's the only thing if you like rare plays i don't play with rare plays uh there are two or three pages in the rules of how you want to do that. So you can be as simple and basic as you want with this. You can just go bang, bang, bang on the tables and not do anything. You can have the catchers with good arms, uh, cut down base chances. You have injuries. You have hit and runs. It really is a complete game package that you can just kind of stow with you uh, and take pretty much anywhere you want. It's two pieces of paper. And if you bring the charts, it might be three pieces of paper. The charts are three pages. That's it. And so if you put, like get a report protector, you can put whatever you want there, plus a way for you to keep score, and just bring it with you. You can roll the dice on your on your iPad or iPhone or, or whatever. So there you go. That's roster card baseball. I really enjoy the game so much that I went out and bought everything. It's the only game I have that I have pretty much the complete run for. I don't think he's done uh, the pre-1900 dead ball seasons, which is saying a lot. You can print out every page. Every page comes, every team comes on one sheet. So a modern season would be 30 pages. A 70s and 80s season would be 26 post-expansion. You want to play a 50, 40s, 50s, 30s, 40s, 50s season. It's 16 pages tops and you get everybody. War season, this might be a little fun. So, highly, highly recommend it if you're looking for a game that is fast but gives you as much detail as you want. Is it like an app, a master, or replay? Super advanced? No, there's no bulks. Um, you kind of have to simulate throwing errors on a two base error, so not everything can happen. And if a, a batter didn't hit a homer, he's not going to hit a homer in this. So, it's not the perfect game. But it's a good game, and I highly recommend it. All right, so thank you so much for watching. Hit subscribe and like. Hit the bell icon when I go live. We do games several nights a week or several days a week, as a matter of fact. So thank you so much. I'm Ron Juckett, and we'll talk to you the next time.